Hey guys, it's Dirk. People ask how you can build an iPhone app. Well, the answer to that is you need to learn how to program in Swift. And in Swift, one of the very important syntax is pattern matching in which you have different cases you want to switch on. There comes a new syntax called the switch syntax. In this episode, let's talk about that. It will help you a lot in when you build iOS apps and you use this syntax a lot. It is an important piece in Swift. So let's head over the demo and we will get started. For this demo, we'll create a new playground. So let's get started with a new playground and we'll name this guy Switch Statements because what we want to do in this video, I will introduce you to new syntax called Switch Statement. Okay, let's increase the font size here. All right, let's do it light. Now, let's review about arrays first. Let's say we want to have an array of languages, var languages, that is some of the programming or markup languages that we use things like Swift. we have objective c we have java we have html and how about we have css right those are accordingly for ios development android development and web development right now let's say we want to have platforms an array of platforms and for that we have ios android in the web. Now do you see the pattern of these things? We have each of these as a category, right? And we want to match the value of each of the language inside the array here. Maybe if we select our Swift, then we want to maybe return iOS. If we select Objective-C, yes, we will return iOS too because Objective-C is used or has been used to view iOS at and it's the same for java html and css so let's say we want to have a variable or constant called selected language and we'll call it java like this right or we use languages dot or subscript two zero one two right now from this one i want to use the switch syntax so that so that we don't have to worry about if you remember in the last few videos, we talked about if else statements, right? If we do it as if selected language equals to Swift, then we do something. If we, it equals to Objective-C, then we do something. That's kind of like mouthful and it doesn't have the readability very well. So we have the switch syntax using switch like this and we want to switch on the selected language, right? and open and close the parentheses. Inside these open and close parentheses are uh, curly braces are our chunk of code. Instead of doing like just random code, we have to divide it into different cases. And in this case, we have, if it is Swift or if it is Objective C, then we do something. And then it has to indent like this, right? If it is the case that selected language is Swift or it's selected language is object, Objective C. Then how about we just print this thing to the console? Something like print selected language like this is used to view iOS apps, right? Because it is Swift or Objective C. Now I use this thing here called string interpolation. What it does is it will insert the value of selected language into the string. So if it is Objective C, then we'll put in Objective C is used to be iOS apps, right? Very simple. Next we have case Java. Then we print something like selected language is used to build Android in web apps, yes, it used to be web app too. So web apps like this, okay, it has to indent like that. All right, let's do the last line over here because do you see that these are switched on different case, uh, cases of, okay, Xcode has crash. Now it it is used to switch on different cases. So what if, what if, the selected language doesn't fall into any of these cases. Then Xcode um, Swift 
forces us to have a default case. So for this default case, we we'll just print out something like, I have no idea what selected language is used for, like that, right? So now, use, if selected language is language is subscript to, it means Java, then it prints out, I have no idea what Java is used for, huh? It's weird because we do have a Java case over here, right? But as it turns out, this Java, it has an uppercase J over there. And this one is a lowercase J. So it's two different strings. So what we had to do, select a language dot lowercase. So that it will lower all of the characters case down to lowercase, right? So now Java is used to be Android and web apps. But what if, what if we do it as HTML? HTML here, I have no idea what HTML is used for. But do we do have the HTML and CSS, right? So I have a core challenge for you in this video. That is have another case for HTML and CSS and print out something like HTML is used to be web pages or CSS is used to be web pages. So I have another case below here, right? Now, the last thing I want to show you, how about we have Python over there? Then it will skip out this into the default case and print, I have no idea Python is used for. And if it is Java, they skip out this block here, it forms into the Java case, it prints this thing out, and it will execute whatever the code below it, something like print ABC here, right? Then below here I have ABC. It doesn't execute all the other cases below there. In other languages, it, we call it exit, um, we break out of the case. In, we, in Swift, we do have the break, but you don't have to do that because it will automatically break out of that. So if you comes from things like C or Objective, um, yeah, Objective C or C++ or Java, then you have to do the break case, right? But in Swift, you don't have to do this stuff. All right, guys, that is how you use the switch syntax in Swift. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Could you do me two favors? Number one, can you subscribe to this channel so that I can continue to deliver to you free trainings every single week right here on this channel. And number two, um, what I want to do for you is I have an iOS training webinar that I do every single week and I want to give you a spot in the webinar so what you can do is click the link right on this video or in the description right down below register for the webinar then you enter your name and email select the dates that you want to meet me on the webinar and we will rock and roll we'll, I will teach you how to build an iPhone app from scratch without any prior programming experience. We'll have a complete iOS app that is ready for the App Store. Sounds good? So click the link right on this page, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you on the webinar. Just go into the link right down below and go out there every single day of your life, learn new things, craft your ideas, and contribute to the world.